So I had, uh, for, when Connor asked me to do this, I had planned this one particular story that I had pulled out of a, a failure in missional living, investing in somebody's lives, watching it fail. But then the sweet part about it, how eight months later that person came back and, and uh, called me and told me what a great life he was living and how he was in church and all that. So there was success. That was the story I was going to tell. But as chance would have it this week, some things happened in my life. And this morning I woke up and God said, you need to share something different. And you need to encourage EAC. So uh, I want to give you a word of encouragement this morning. There's a big backstory to this, to, to, to my life and, and my faith in Jesus that goes way back to the, to the age of 12 when I accepted him as my personal savior. But the one thing that I learned through my journey, my faith journey, is that Jesus has left me on this earth for one reason only. And that's to help fulfill the Great Commission, to be a part of his work, to jump on that Jesus train. And, uh, and through that, through growing up in a Baptist church where we used to go out into the Walmart parking lot with the Bible and hit people over the head with it, basically, right? And I realized it wasn't, it, it was effective sometimes. We had some success, right? But the real way to reach people with the gospel was by being real with them, investing in them, caring about them. And so my wife and I have been living this life for quite some time. And we have a a huge network of folks that we try to invest in. Uh, I have my business, which is my ministry. And in my business, there's my employees. There's over 20 employees that I just pour my life into and I care about and I listen to their needs. I have an organization I've been a part of for about seven years now, uh, the uh, Florida Home Builders Association and, and the local uh, uh, chapter as well. But there is a group of people there that I've been investing in, trying to reach to and, and listening to and um, trying to meet their needs and share the, the light of Christ with them. Then there's, of course, my neighbors. I live out in Sam Suler, and there's a lot of people in those areas that I've just fell in love with and trying to reach them and, and, that, and bring the light to those folks. And then, of course, ministry here at EAC, which is my heart, right? This is where uh, I love to serve. But all that, all the, all the things that, that we've been talking about with you know, blessing people and eating and having parties and listening to people's needs and investing them. There's something that happens when you do that. And Hugh Halter says in his book, Flesh, he says, you're going to, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you resources, resources. It's going to cost you uh, in your time. It's going to cost you emotionally. And this past Wednesday, I woke up after I don't know how many dinners and lunches and different things and, you know, listening to people's needs. And I was beat down. EAC, let me tell you, I was, I was at a low spot. I was beaten down. I was tired. I was worn out. Joyce came home that afternoon, and, and she had been at a customer's house doing some work, and she wanted to come in and tell me the, how she got to pray with this person and how they had these needs, and I, I don't want to hear it. I don't care. I don't, I'm done. I, I, my brain was worn down. So I went, uh, she, she went on to do her thing, and, and I went and did, practiced a little bit about what we've learned through, uh, through Frost's book where it says to stop and listen. So I went to my listen area and I sat there and I listened. Not sure that I heard a whole lot, but I just spent some time listening. And then I went into the scriptures and the first verse in the devotion I was reading was John 4, 6. <clears throat> and Jesus was weary. And I didn't read any further than that. That's all I needed. My Lord, my Savior, this person that I have devoted, trying to devote my life, trying to walk with more and more every single day. He got weary. He needed rest. Of course, that led on for me just to kind of search out some other areas in Jesus's life where he was tired, he was sleeping, uh, different things. But are you guys encouraged yet? <laughs> Is it, this stuff will wear you down. But we, as we get to know Jesus, as we get to know him more, he gives us exactly what we need when we need it, need it. And he was doing it, as I found out after the first service, in ways that I didn't even know about. Somebody came up to me after the first service and said, hey, listen, I don't know what was going on with you last Wednesday, but you know that email we got, you know, there was an action I didn't need to take place and you, you didn't respond and I felt like I needed to call you. He said, something told me just not to call you. And that's not his nature, by the way. He, he likes to take action and get things done. And I'm thinking, man, God knew exactly what I needed in that time, in that moment. So as we live missionally, you're going to get beat up. You're going to have success stories. You're going to have failures. 
Uh, but the joy that you get in serving Jesus is just amazing. And my wife and I are so excited. She's a listener. She gets to listen and, and pull out the needs that people have. And we get the opportunity together with our children to go serve and meet those people. And I, I, I would love to someday tell you all the thousands of stories of the people who ask us why we do what we do. And, and uh, you know, we get to share our faith and get to share the love of Jesus with them. But be encouraged, the AC, living well missionally is a wonderful, wonderful, amazing thing. Thank you, Jay. Appreciate you. Love that man.